Aloha. Thank you for joining us today at the virtual STEM festival. My name is Yao Zheng. I'm an assistant professor at the electrical engineering department, UH Manoa. Today, we'll show you our efforts to use science and technology to preserve the natural environment of Hawaii Islands. Specifically, we apply radar technology to track and eradicate coconut rhinoceros beetles, a known invasive species that damage the palm tree canopy. Next, students in our team will discuss the motivation of the project, provide an overview of common radar technology and its issue in this application, introduce or design of harmonic radar-based tracking system or hardware and software implementation. Finally, we'll describe an at-home experiment for you to grasp the concept of harmonic response applied in our project. Hey guys, I'm Brian, a senior in the electrical engineering department. The basic idea of a radar is a signal that is sent towards an object and then reflected back. This is something that is also observed in nature. Bats and dolphins use high frequency sound waves. Those sounds are sent out and when they hit something, an echo is produced. By listening to the timing and the echoes, they're able to determine the surroundings. In our project, we would instead use electromagnetic signals in a similar way to track the invasive beetles. The use of radar is very broad, but a basic radar is also extremely limited to what it can do. The problem with radar, as we can see, is that the sense signal is impartial to all objects it hits. This creates a problem. Everything and anything shows up in the echoes, but we really only want to see the reflection from the beetles. To solve this, we will be implementing a harmonic tag, which we will explain in the following slide. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Matt, and I'm a senior in electrical engineering. Because of these problems with typical radar, we alternatively use something called harmonic radar. An essential part of the harmonic radar is the harmonic tag, which consists of a small antenna attached to a tiny black box called a diode. In our case, we put this harmonic tag on the beetle and use it to double the frequency of an original signal. Later, you'll have an experiment that you can do at home to better understand this super cool concept. It might make a little more sense in context. Let's talk about the entire radar system shown by the picture in this slide. The harmonic radar sends out a signal at a certain frequency, similar to the radio in your car or the Wi-Fi router in your house. However, if the signal reaches the beetle with the harmonic tag, it sends a signal back to the radar at twice the original frequency which makes radar detection much more accurate because we can clearly distinguish the beetle from other objects. In our experiments, we look at different types of antenna designs for our harmonic tag. You may have seen wire antennas on cars, dish antennas on houses or rooftops, or maybe even huge radio antenna towers. Our harmonic tag also uses antenna. But these are super small and lightweight, so the beetle can move almost normally. Looking at the pictures on the left, these antennas point in different directions and have different ranges, so we are trying to select the best one for tracking these beetles. As shown in the lower right-hand corner of the slide, we first test our design through computer simulations. Essentially, we get a computer to perform a lot of calculations for us to figure out how good our antenna actually is. Then we can select the best design, build it, and attach it to the beetle for tracking. In the upper right hand corner, we see a picture from researchers that have already applied a harmonic tag to an invasive hornet. I think one of the important morals of the story is, don't be afraid of math. In STEM, once you have a firm understanding of math and physics concepts from school, you can make the computer do the math for you and truly make a difference in the world. Hi, my name is Alvin Yang and I'm a senior in electrical engineering. Here we have our hardware implementation, which consists of two millimeter wave transceivers, one which will be transmitting at 12 gigahertz and the other which will be receiving at 24 gigahertz. Here our transceivers have these 4x4 antenna arrays, which allows us to control the beam direction. 
We choose these high frequencies to allow us to put smaller transponders on the beetles and allows us to track the smaller movements that the beetles make. Hi, my name is Willie Chang and I will be discussing the GNU Radio implementation for our harmonic radar. GNU Radio is a free application to design and implement signal processing. We can modify the signal being sent and received by the physical radar. In this application, you can modify blocks and their values to easily change how the program executes its function. In the presentation, we have an example of how a signal generator block that tells the radar what type of signal to send. As you can see, there are a couple of values that we can change, such as the frequency and the amplitude, and this will translate to an actual signal. The harmonic radar discussed earlier in this presentation is being implemented in this fashion, sending a continuous wave to the radars and receiving it back. So what is a continuous wave? A continuous wave is a signal that is sent without any breaks. However, there are limitations when using this type of signal for the harmonic radar. When you send a signal, it is difficult to determine which part of the signal you are receiving since all parts of the signal are the same. Thus, when we are implementing the harmonic radar, we modify this continuous wave slightly using phase compression. What this does is shift the signal so that we can obtain distinct patterns within the signal. For example, say the continuous wave is represented with stick people. There is no way to tell if we receive the first stick person or the last one. With phase compression, we modify the signal or stick person slightly so that we can obtain a pattern and tell which part of the signal was reflected. That way, we know which part of the signal we are receiving, and with that information, we can correctly calculate the distance to the object and the reflected signal. Hello, my name is Samson and I am a senior in the electrical engineering department. I'll be talking a little bit about the LabVIEW implementation that we have. LabVIEW is a virtual interface where we can connect all our equipment to our computer, such as the transceivers. Then we can control our equipment automatically by clicking the start button on our interface. This will allow us to record all the data for further analysis. Hello, my name is Marley and I'm a senior in electrical engineering. And I will now show you all an experiment that you can perform at home that will increase your understanding of harmonic frequencies. First, create two pendulums. Make one pendulum half the length of the other pendulum. Next, suspend the two pendulums on a flat surface like a table. And finally, connect the two pendulums together with a rigid object. Now, if we start to swing the pendulums, we will notice that the shorter pendulum swings with twice the frequency of the larger pendulum. This demonstrates the concept of harmonic frequencies because we can look at the longer pendulum like the fundamental frequency while the shorter pendulum shows the harmonic frequency. In conclusion, the project we presented today leveraged the principle in physics and mathematics to address a pressing environmental problem that affects the islands of Hawaii. This project is partially supported by the National Science Foundation. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about science and technology, please reach out to your local STEM community.